Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Everyone has said it, though some did not say it out loud. Some have run and returned the same day. Some have never got round to running at all, and some have run and stayed away. It is one of these who gives us the title of our story, The Man is Missing. The letters get smaller, the pressure of the pen gets lighter, the lines get thinner. The man is not well. Are you sure? T's aren't crossed in a few places. See, the loops aren't completed. Perhaps he's not sick. Perhaps he's only hysterical. Or perhaps... Perhaps he's mad. Our mystery drama, The Man is Missing was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Ann Williams and Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Within the huge New York City Police Department, there's a small coterie of men who wear no uniforms. They are the investigative detectives. They have one captain, one lieutenant, and five sergeants. They receive about 100 calls every day. Out of 16,000 cases, they have solved better than 99%. They are known as the Missing Persons Squad. I looked up, and there she was, back again. I told her and told her over and over, but there she was, same bright smile, same eager look, like she knew I could do something and she was just hanging around waiting for me to do it. My name's Wiley Caldwell and I'm captain of the missing person squad. Good job. I like it. We know our stuff, if I do say so myself, as perhaps I shouldn't. Runaway kids, we handle a lot of those, and old people. The ones who get tired of feeling useless and unwanted and just wander off. We get a lot of those, too. However, there she was, back for the umpteenth time to ask me for the umpteenth time to find her husband. Captain Caldwell, may I talk to you? Uh, Mrs. McLaughlin. Why don't you call me Mia? <laughs> but we know each other pretty well by now. Uh, we do. So, call me Mia, please. Okay, Mia, but the answer's the same. We checked the files, we called the morgue. Lawrence McLaughlin. Either place. So he's not in jail, he's not in the hospital, he's not dead. What more do you want? But where is he? Out there somewhere. But can't you look for him? Is he under 18? Of course not. What do you... Is he over uh, 65? He's 29. Aha. Uh -huh. Well then, even if we could locate him, we couldn't do anything about it. We couldn't bring him in. Why couldn't you? Because we would be violating his civil rights. You understand? Unless, of course, he's mental. Then we could take him. Is he? Is he mental? Off his rocker, out of his mind. Nuts. Oh, no. All right, then we can't touch him. I know it's hard on you, but I must break the news to you. Husbands run off all the time. Has Lawrence ever done the vanishing act before? Certainly not. All right. Probably he'll never do it again. Provided, of course, he comes back. Now, you run along home and wait to hear from him, okay? Uh, I I have heard from him. You have? He sent me some money. Well, then you're all set. But he doesn't say where he is. But he's thinking of, yeah. Well, he wouldn't be sending you the money, would he? You see? He's worried about you. He loves you. You're his wife, and he loves you. So why? Do you I don't know where he is. 
Oh, please, Captain Caldwell, please. I, I know you can find him for me if you just try. I mean, you're the Bureau of Missing Persons, and Larry is missing, and I want you to find him if I can, you. I want you. But... All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, quit, quit, quit crying. Now, that isn't going to do any good, you know that. All right, now, stop crying, Miriam. <laughs> Why won't you help me? I'll tell you what. I'm going to turn you over to one of our detectives, Ben Chase, his name is. He's a very nice man. Very fatherly type. You like him. Now, you tell him all about your missing spouse, and maybe he can think of something. I'll let be. Okay? Okay, then. Come on. This way, he's right in here. Uh, Ben, I've got a lady here I want you to meet. This is, uh, Mia McLaughlin. Mia, this is Detective Benjamin Chase. Take care of the little lady, Ben, huh? She was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen in my whole life. Skin like pink and white alabaster, dark brown hair with a shine to it, big round eyes, the exact same color as the blue jeans she had on. It was like spring had just walked through the door. And me, 58 years old. I'm Ben Chase, Detective Third Grade Missing Persons Squad. I was a patrolman for 15 years. Then I did a hitch with public morals for a short time. Then somebody smiled on me, and I landed here. What a swell job. I mean, here is where you really get the feeling you're helping people. Please, find my husband. Uh... Your husband's missing, is that it? Yes, and, and don't tell me about his civil rights. I, I, I want to know where he is. Well, we could probably locate That's him. That's all I want. But we couldn't make him come back to you. Well, I just want to know where he is. Now, we can check the files. But the captain did that. Hospitals, uh, the more... Oh, he's alive, I know that. I, I don't think he's sick. See, I got this from him this morning. Oh, you got a letter from him, mm -hmm. huh? It had money in it. Okay, if I take a look at it? Sure. Look. Look, it was mailed right here in New York. You can tell by the postmark. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mind if I read it? I don't mind. <sighs> Darling Mia, thought you might be short of cash. Love, Larry. Well, say, now, this sounds like he thinks the world of you. What, what are you so worried about? He'll come back. But where is he? What happened to... Now, Mrs. McLaughlin... Uh, you can call me Mia if you want to. Uh, husbands do get this urge once in a while to, uh, you know, take off, be on their own for a while. Not just husbands, either. Wives get it, too. I have to say, I can't see why anyone would go off and leave a lovely girl like you. Well, he did. You, uh, you do know you're very pretty, don't you? I guess. You guess, don't you know? I'm a model, a photographer's model. You have to have some kind of looks for that, I guess. Well, you've got more than some kind of looks. Well, thank you. A lot more. Look, can you help me find Larry? Well, I, uh, I can try. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I, I can't go out on a job. I just think about him all the time. And what could have happened to him? Yeah, well, I, uh... I'd have to do it on my own, you understand. I mean, it wouldn't be an official police case. And uh, it'll take a lot of legwork. A lot of time, too. And I don't have too much free time. I don't know if my wife will care for my taking on any outside work. Are you married? Oh, ho, ho, am I married. 25 years married is what I am. So I know about husbands getting the urge to take off. Did you ever do it? Oh, no, 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 I never did. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I never had the urge. No, I'm married to a wonderful woman. Irma is about the best wife anybody could imagine, but... Well, I, uh... I, I've had urges now and then. You're very nice to try to help me. Yeah. Listen, do you mind if I take this envelope home with me? No, take it, if it'll help. Yeah, and, uh, the note inside, can I take that, too? Yes, <laughs> Don't lose it. I want it back. Oh, no, you'll get it back, all right. I mean, it, it's all I've got of it. All right, all right. Now, don't cry, huh? We'll find him. That is, uh, I'll find him. Well, I hope so. Yeah, now, uh, i got to run along home. Irma will be wondering what happened to me. And we don't want her to think that she's got a missing husband now, do we? I'm Irma. Um, 
Emma Chase, 52 years old, married 25 years to Benjamin Chase. Detective third class, husband first class all the way. We've never had children, but we never really needed children to bring us together. We were together from the start. Oh, there have been times, a few of them, when I felt that Ben's eye was roving and that he'd kind of like to roll with it. He doesn't know that I know about those times, and I wouldn't let him know that I know because he'd feel terrible if he thought he'd hurt me in any way at all. He's just that kind of man. And at 52, my waist is a good bit thicker than it was when I married him. And the hair has gray in it. And I almost have a double chin unless I remember to stand right. So when he came home that night... Emma? Yeah? I'm home. Well, you don't say. I'd never have guessed. All right, don't be fresh. Give me a kiss. Okay. Mm. <laughs> now your beer's next to your chair, and there's some good cheese to go with it. Really sharp cheddar. Ah, uh, you're a great girl. Well, of course I am. <sighs> you're a little late tonight, aren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened, uh, a girl came into the office, see, that is, Captain Caldwell brought her in, turned her over to me. Seems she's been bothering him for quite some time, missing husband. Oh, one of those. Yeah, he's been missing for some time. Anyway, Caldwell checked the files, the morgue, he didn't come up with anything, but Mia kept coming back, coming back. Mia? Yeah, that's her name, Mia McLaughlin. Anyway, I talked to her, and she showed me this note she got from him. It was mailed right here in the city, and, uh... There was money in it. You wrote a note? Yeah, yeah. Sounded very concerned about her having some money. I'd like to see that note. Oh, um, are you still hung up on that stuff? Okay, okay. No, you can't blame me if I try to be part of your work. Or can you? Or do you, I should say. If you'd rather I'd butt out, just say the word. Now, Irma... I'd like to remind you that Raphael Sherman... Oh, please, not again. Raphael Sherman was attached to the Krakow police force from the start of the century till 1900... Irma, and... please, you've got Raphael Sherman on the brain. Raphael Sherman started collecting envelopes when he was a little boy. Well, so did I, when I was a little girl. I never played with dolls. I just looked at handwritings on envelopes. Fascinating. All different. Some beautiful, some ugly, and everything in between. And like with Sherman, after a while, I started to find things that some handwritings had in common. And when I knew the people those handwritings belonged to, I found out that those people had certain things in common, too. Then, people with heart trouble write differently from people without heart trouble. Oh, Irma, honestly. But the psychological differences, that's where it gets really interesting. <sighs> you can read a person's whole personality in his handwriting, his whole life, then, everything that's happened to him. You really expect me to believe that? Well, Sherman could do it. He did it over and over, and he did it for the police. Now, I don't say that I'm as good as Sherman, but I do know something about it. Okay. Okay, take a look at this. Thank you. Well, see anything? This man is sick. What? Look, the letters get smaller. You see, the pressure of the pen gets lighter. The lines get thinner. No, no, wait. Maybe he's not sick. Maybe he's only hysterical. Or maybe... Maybe he's mad. Raphael Sherman had no peers in his day. After him came Michael Fischel and the French clairvoyant Madame Lucy Vidi. And among the medical men who have used graphology to ferret out clues to mental or physical ailments, we find Erlenmeyer, Hauser, Duparchy Jeans, and Charcot, famous head of the Paris Salpetriere. I'll be back shortly for that, too. Captain Wiley Caldwell of the Missing Persons Squad has been bothered by repeated visits from Mia McLaughlin, begging him to locate her husband, who has disappeared. Wiley has turned the girl over to Ben Chase, detective third grade. Ben shows the note to his wife, Irma. Irma, aspiring graphologist, deduces from the calligraphy that Mia's husband is sick hysterical, or even mad. Did I know what I was doing when I turned that dumb little chick over to Ben Chase? 
I thought, of course, he'd feed her a line. Maybe pick up a clue someplace from some connection. In other words, get her off my back. Also, there was always a chance that her husband would show up. A very good chance, because she was a very neat little dish. A fact I felt sure that my friend Ben had not overlooked entirely. Now, I'm a friend of Ben's, and I also know his wife, Emma. A marvelous woman, I amaze. I thought a little interference for me on her behalf wouldn't be amiss. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Uh, that's all you can tell me, Mrs. Downs? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's something. Anyway, thanks. All right, Captain. Who's uh, Mrs. Downs? Uh, oh, her. Yeah, her. Huh? Who is she? Well, actually, uh, she's Mia's mother, Mia McLaughlin's mother. That's so? Yeah, I thought maybe she could give me a lead to go on. Did she? No, no. She says they got along great. He was crazy about her. Seems he wanted to be a painter, a serious type painter. Gave it up and went to commercial art right after they got married. Maybe he regretted it. Well, Mia's a model, you know. That, that's how they met. He, uh, he was living in this artist colony upstate in the Catskills, uh... Braden Falls, you've heard of it. Where all the artists stop together. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Mia was a model up there for one summer. She posed for him for nothing. Uh, he was even broker than the others. They fell in love, and they got married. He went with an ad agency. She became a fashion model. Everything was hunky-dory till, uh, till it cut out. And her mother hasn't got the foggiest idea why. Have you? No, I can't say I have. Why anyone... Would want to leave a girl like, like me? Uh, of course, uh, Irma says. Uh, I, I don't put any stock in that. What does Irma say? Well, I. I don't know if you know this, Captain, but Irma's very into this uh, graphology stuff. I didn't know that. No. Oh yeah, yeah. She uh, practically worships a guy named Raphael Schumann. He's an Austrian. He's dead now, but. He was official handwriting expert for the Central Law Court of Vienna when he was alive. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, nothing's wrong with that, but outside his regular job, he had this hobby. Yeah, it was more, more like uh, an obsession, that he could read people's characters from their handwriting. And not only that, but their past and their future. Now, can you tie that? That sounds interesting. And before he died, people said he could tell how a person looked just by his handwriting. Yeah? Well, anyway, I showed Irma the note Mia got from her husband. It was only a line or two. And Irma glommed onto it like it was a hot clue. I mean, she said the handwriting told her that the guy is sick or hysterical or maybe even crazy. She saw all that? Well, she thinks she saw all that. What if she's right? Would explain a lot, wouldn't it? Hmm? If the guy lost his marbles all of a sudden? A crazy man doesn't send money home, Captain. How would you know what a crazy man does? Why don't you admit the possibility that i has got something there? Better help you. No, I'm doing all right. No, you're not. Now, you wait and see. Okay, Ben, okay. One more thing. You're spending too much time on it. That phone call to the girl's mother, you made that from here on official time. And that girl's been here almost every day talking to you on official time. The way you look, you've been spending an awful lot of your off hours on the case, too. Am I right? Uh, quite a lot, yeah. Well, cut it out. I don't like it. And I don't think your wife cares too much for it, either. I was shook up when the captain walked out. Part of what he said was true. I was spending a lot of time trying to locate me as husband. I'd gone down to the Art Students League and talked to the teachers down there. A lot of them remembered him from the olden days. Nice fella, they all said. Big, strong, very outgoing. No sign of any kind of ailment, no instability. Certainly no signs of being demented. But so much for what Irma thought she saw in his handwriting, Irma. What about Irma? What was that last crack the captain had made about... Him not liking the hours I was giving to the case and Irma not liking it either. She hadn't said she didn't like it. She hadn't raised any objections. She was too busy going over that little scrap of paper. But if I didn't find him soon, was she going to begin to wonder? Ah, oh, hell, I was beginning to wonder myself. Just like that, I made up my mind. I was going to take myself off the case. I should never have taken it on in the first place. 
I'm crazy about my wife. I had my mind all made up to tell Mia I was letting go of the case when she walked in. Hello, Ben. Oh, hi, hi, hi there, Mia. Uh, sit down. I want to talk to you about, uh... uh is Captain Caldwell mad at me about something? Well, he's not mad, exactly. You're mad at you. Oh, look. Look what I got this morning. Oh, another letter, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this one had money in it, too. Uh, okay to read it? Oh, sure. It, it's about the same as the first one. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so I see. Uh, only look where it's mailed from. Uh, Braden Falls. Mm-hmm. That's where we met, Larry and me. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, tell me about Brayton Falls. Well, it's a very romantic place in the mountain. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes, certain times of day, the mountains turn blue and purple. Oh, that's beautiful. And then there's the falls. Yeah, yeah, Brayden Falls. Oh, they come tumbling down from way high up. Crash, wow. smash. Some places you can't hear what people are saying. The falls are so loud. Oh, it's just beautiful. Mm. Larry and I used to go on picnics, eat sandwiches and stuff, and listen to the falls and and make love. Uh-huh. Um, why do you suppose he went up there, not, not just to mail a letter? I think... I think he went there because it's where we were so happy. He wanted to remember how it was at first. And you weren't so happy later on, is that it? Oh, well, we had fights. Not very many, not very often. Just sometimes. Well, when? What about? Uh, you mind telling me? Oh, I, I don't know. I, I never knew. Everything would be going along just fine, and then all of a sudden, we'd be arguing. I, I wouldn't know why. I just know that I was losing. Losing? Losing what? The argument. It was going to turn out he was right, and I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Every single time. Yeah. Look, Mia, uh, I might as well tell you, I was, uh, I was, I was going to give up on this case. Not fine. Well, it isn't official business, and it's taken up a lot of time. But you have to. Well, this, uh, this note from Braden Falls, I ought to follow up on that. You mean go up to Braden Falls and look for him? Oh, yes. Yes. Well, tomorrow's my day off. Well, I'll go with you. Well... Well, I can show you around all the different places and and the falls where Larry and I used to go for picnics. Oh, your wife wouldn't mind, would she? That little piece of paper hadn't been out of my sight for days. I picked it up from time to time, and now and then I got what I hoped were flashes of illumination. Other times, I sat down with it under a good light and let my unconscious mind just play with it. It's a trick of the unconscious mind. Much trickier than anyone imagines. Come on. I'm home. Good. Be right there. Where's my beer? I'm getting it. I really need it. Do you have a hard day? Yeah, sort of. Well, drink your beer. Where's yours? I don't want any. Are you going on a wagon or something? No. I just want to keep my mind clear. Psychographology is a very exacting work. Psycho what? Psychographology. What Raphael Sherman did. What I'm trying to do. Analyzing people from their handwriting. Are you still doing that? Of course I am. And don't try to stop me. I'm not trying to stop you. Wiley Caldwell says I should encourage you. I don't know if I can go that far. Captain Caldwell said that? Yeah, yeah. I, I told him that you said Larry McLaughlin might be psychotic, and he said you could be right. Of course, he doesn't know any more about it than I do or you do. I'm beginning to know more all the time. Pretty soon, I may be able to give you a pretty accurate description of the man. Forget it. I can't. Wiley thinks I'm putting in too much time on the case. It's not official business, you know. But you can't stop now. I've got nothing to go on, am I? Just let me help you. Well, I'll give it a couple more days, just long enough to track down one more clue. It might mean something. What? What clue? Well, Mia brought this in today. It's another note from... Let me see it. Yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, there was money in this one, too. Doesn't sound like a man who's fed up with his wife. According to Mrs. Downs, McLaughlin was crazy about his wife. Who's Mrs. Downs? Mia's mother. She says McLaughlin gave up being a serious artist so he could support his wife. Oh, by the way. 
You'll notice that the note was mailed from Braden Falls. That's the uh, artist colony place up in the mountains. Well, the McLaughlins met there and fell in love there. Mia did some modeling for him. And uh, I, I thought that uh, since tomorrow is my day off, I would go up there. Mm-hmm. You know, take a look around. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mia is going with me. Mm-hmm. Is that all right with you? Mm. Yeah. Now, will you put that thing down, Irma? Put the letter down and listen to me. What are you so mad I about? I tell you, I'm going off for the day with a young girl, a young, attractive girl, and you've got no objection. My day off, my one day off, the day we go to the beach or the movies or do something special. I tell you, I'm going off to the mountains with a young girl, used to be a model, and you don't care? Ben, I was right. The person who wrote this letter has something wrong with his lungs. What are you talking about, for Pete's sake? Some kind of respiratory disease, trouble with his breathing. Now, look, look, here. Uh, now, you see the little pauses in the writing? Pauses? I know they're hard to see. I can see them. But they were in the other note, too. But I wanted to be careful. I wanted to be sure. And here they are again. It says, if every so often he had to stop and lean on his pen, take a little rest before he goes on. Oh, Ben, give me a little more time and I'll be able to tell you all about the person who wrote this note. A violin in the hands of an average person will have an ordinary sound. The notes may all be correct, the stops all of the proper length, the speed and volume all is prescribed. But the same violin in the hands of an artist will take on the quality of real music. Such is the power and the sensitivity of the human hand. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Psychographology is a fairly recent word. It describes a process by which character and personality can be deduced from the analysis of handwriting. Irma Chase has been attempting such an analysis from two notes written by the missing husband of Mia McLaughlin. Among other things, she has inferred that the writer of the notes is emotionally unstable and has some sort of trouble with his breathing. She has not tried to keep her husband from using his day off to travel to a place called Braden Falls, high in the mountains, accompanied by the young girl, in search of the missing man. Maybe I shouldn't have butted in. I thought Ben Chase was a good man, a good cop with a fine record. As far as I knew, he was a good husband, too. I'd met Irma Chase a few times, been to their house, they'd been to mine. And all I can say is she seemed like a happy woman, very content with her life. Seems she had this interest in what she called psychographology, almost an obsession, according to Ben. But uh, what was the harm in that? Actually, there might be a lot of good in it. Anyway, when Irma Chase called and said she wanted to come in and talk to me, I said, come ahead. How are you, Wiley? I'm fine. Sit down. What can I do for you? I don't exactly know. Maybe nothing. Is it about Ben? Well, yes, mostly. He went off this morning with that young girl, Mia something or other. McLaughlin. Yeah, McLaughlin. They went up to Braden Falls together. Um, I don't think you got a thing to worry about. You don't? She's a very pretty young girl, but I know Ben. I don't think he's really interested in her. Then gone to Braden Falls because that's where the girl's husband wrote his last note. I know. I've seen the note. Matter of fact, I've got it with me. There's a chance the man might be in Braden Falls, and they've gone there to check it out. Ben will be back by tonight. Don't worry about that. Oh, I'm not worried about that. No, you're not? Well, then what do you... What do you... Wiley, you know I'm interested in graphology. Yeah, Ben said something I've been me. studying these two notes from Larry McLaughlin, and I've come up with a few things. Is it all right if I tell you about them? Of course, Sam. I told you I got an open mind. Now, the first thing that started to emerge was that whoever wrote those notes is emotionally unbalanced... Maybe psychotic. Ben told me about that. The second thing, which I got from the second note, is that the writer has trouble breathing. Now, I'm not going to go into how I deduced that. You wouldn't understand it anyway. You're probably right there. Now, I've come up with something else. 
Well, come on. Let's have it. Wiley, I could be wrong. But I've got a strong intuition that the person who wrote those two notes has criminal tendencies. You said... I said criminal tendencies. Um... What, what, uh, direction do these, uh, criminal tendencies take, Emma? Can you tell? I don't like to say because I'm afraid you're going to laugh at I, me. I won't laugh. Whoever wrote those notes is capable of murder. You could be wrong, Emma. Huh? I could be right. Yes? And if I'm right... Ben and that girl are up at Braden Falls tracking down a man who is capable of killing. And they don't know it. Braden Falls isn't even a whistle stop. It's not on a railroad at all. Mia and I arrived on the bus. We were the only ones getting off. The center of town has a filling station, a grocer, a butcher, a stationery store, and an ice cream parlor. That's about all. But tucked away in the mountains are all kinds of houses, from log cabins to Quonset huts. We strolled around, talking to the artists who lived in those houses. Nobody had seen or heard from Larry McLaughlin, though a lot of them remembered him pretty well. We planned to take the four o'clock bus back to the city when Mia got this idea of climbing one of the mountains up to where the falls had their origin. She said they were spectacular at that height. And we had nothing to do till the bus arrived, so... Uh, they're beautiful, all right. Huh? The falls, beautiful. Oh, uh, didn't I tell you? Yeah. Hey, how much, how much for it? Oh, not, not far. Uh, do you want to rest? No, no, I'm fine. Oh, well, uh, let's sit down for a minute anyway. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I brought along a couple of sandwiches and some ginger ale. Well, I... Hope it's still cold. Oh, great, great. You're quite a girl. Oh, you uh, think so? Yeah, yeah, I do. If I was a little bit younger, uh, 20 or 30 years younger, I'd... I'd... You'd... What? What would you do? Well, <laughs> I guess I'd make a pass at you. Here. Here's your sandwich. Would you mind... Would I mind what? Me making a pass at you? Yes. I'd mind very much. Oh. Oh, well, I'm... I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I know I'm much too old. No, it, 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 it isn't that. No, oh, you're thinking about your husband, aren't you? You're thinking about Larry. I'm sorry. I should have realized that. I guess you associate this place with him, huh? We used to come here for picnics. Yeah. You know, I'm really sorry we couldn't pick up a clue here. He must have come here just for the day, mailed the letter, and left. Larry and I used to, used to have our picnics up at the top. Let's walk up there, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, listen, I hope you'll forgive me being fresh. Uh, that's all right. You're a very pretty girl. I suppose a lot of men have told you that, huh? I... Uh, I guess a lot of them made passes at you. Am I right? Sure, sure, I'm right. A girl like you. Shut up. What? Uh, we're almost there. Oh. Wait until you see the falls where they come out of the rock. A great huge burst of water. It's thrilling. It's as, as though they couldn't wait to get out. As though they've been pushing and pushing. And then they fall out and down into the gorge. Hitting all the rocks on the way, splashing off of them down, down, down. Must be uh, impressive. Oh, it's the most glorious thing you've ever seen. I 
don't. Wait, wait. Ah, ah, ah! Dirty old man. You dirty old man. Ben! Hold on! She pushed him. She pushed him. Hold on, Ben. Hold on. Girl, Ben. Hold on. Hold on. I'll get you, Ben. Just hang on now. Hang on, darling. Why don't you get up? No, I think he's conscious. I think so. Ben, I got him. Who are we? Ben, give him. Let go, let go, let go. Relax, I'll get you out. These rocks are slippery. Relax, relax. All right, let go. I'll get you out. Don't you do anything now. Come on, let me see the water. Yeah. Come on, let me see the water. Where it's deep. You're lucky. He's going to make it, honey. Sure he is. Give me your hand, Wiley. Stay right where you are, Emma. Now, see me, Ben. We'll make it. Okay, yeah. Grab hold of the root of that tree. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, I got it. All right. Can you pull yourself up? Yeah, give me your head. You stay right there. All right, I'm, well, I'm going to give you a shove, man. Yeah, it's, it sounds great. It's okay. I can make it. I can make it. Oh, man. Oh, man. That girl pushed you. Well, Wally, you okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, where's the girl? She's still up there. She's out of her head, that one. How do you two happen to be here? We had a feeling. Well, that is, your wife had a feeling. Look! Oh, look over there. What? Where? Between those two big rocks wedged in between them. It's a body. It's a body. Body of a man. Who are you? You think it's... Yeah. It must be. It has to be. Her husband, the missing man. And it was, of course. Poor Larry McLaughlin's body caught between two jagged boulders, almost at our feet. Ben and Wiley rested for a while, then between them they got the body out. The police picked it up later and they picked up the girl, Mia, too. She was wandering about the mountaintop, very sweet and very vague. Ben had been cut badly by the rocks. The three of us met the next day in his hospital room. I should have known all along it was a woman's handwriting. Well, and you were right on two other points. She's psychotic and she's a murderess. Hey, you were right about the... Uh... Respiratory trouble, too. You know, climbing up there, she's the one that had to stop and rest. They said at the sanitarium she doesn't remember anything about pushing her husband off the ledge. Or pushing you, Ben, either. Why? Why would she do it? Well, according to her handwriting, little Miss McLaughlin is a very frigid lady. You can really see that? I think so. She hated men like poison. Especially men who are attracted to her. Like her husband. Like... Like me. Well? Yeah. You know, I sort of... Uh, it wasn't anything, you know, when we were climbing up there just before we got to the top. Nothing happened, you understand? Absolutely nothing, I swear, Raymond. Then I believe you. Well, I... Uh, I said something. I admit that. Something about... Making a pass at it that I'd, I'd like to, something like that. But that's all. I mean it. That's really all. Just enough to make her hate you. Enough to kill you. <sighs> now, what on earth gave the two of you the inspiration to drive up to Braden Falls? Tell them, Irma. Well, studying the second note, I thought I could see signs of a criminal personality. I figured I should tell Wiley. And you believed her? Half believed her. Enough to drive up here and tell you. Of course, neither of us knew Mia had written the note herself. We thought we were protecting you from her husband, not from her. Hmm. Will she ever be in shape to stand trial, Wiley? If she ever remembers what she's done, you think she might? Yes, she might. Now, what makes you say that? Well, look at this. Hmm? This is the second envelope. Huh? How she addressed this to herself, you see? Mia McLaughlin. Take a good look. Hmm. So? Don't you notice anything? No, no. Wiley, you? Looks okay to me. Compare it with the first one. Look at the M in Mia. Mm. Now, you see how it starts at the left? Yeah, yeah, but they both do. No. 
The second one has a short stroke at the start that goes from right to left, then shifts and goes into the M. Now she started to write something else and then changed. She started to write an E. E for Emma. Emma? Why Emma? Emma's her real, her given name. I called her mother last night. You see, she was trying, without knowing she was trying, to get back to her real self. If she succeeds, the chances are she'll remember everything she did. And she'll go on trial for murder. This is a very nice place where I'm staying. I have my own room. And everyone is very kind. And they ask a lot of questions. But they're very kind. Too kind, maybe. There's one. A man. I don't like the way he looks at me. I don't like it one bit. If he tries to get fresh... Oh, I didn't tell you. I'm Mia McLaughlin. Anyway, I think that's who I am. We've accomplished prodigious feats in outer space, invaded the moon, and discovered what it's made of. Now we're on our way to entering the planets and finding out how they are put together. Outer space will one day be as familiar as our own lakes and prairies. But what of inner space? The space of man's mind. Despite many hints and clues, it is still, in the main, an alien land. I'll be back shortly. be so foolish as to suggest that criminals, actual or potential, can be detected solely by the use of psychographology. But the way things are progressing these days, progressing backwards it sometimes seems, law enforcement needs all the help it can get. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Ann Williams, Ralph Bell, and Terry Keene. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, Subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian.